Hey guys, Chad here. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to create a scrolling background. To get started, you'll need to create a background. And I already created this background in a previous tutorial. So if you need help on creating a background or don't know how, please refer back to that tutorial and that should get you started. The first thing we're going to do is extend all the assets we have on the stage outward so that we have room to scroll them. So let's go ahead here and double click on my fence symbol to go into that. Now basically I just want to extend this outward so that we have some room here. So to make this easy on myself, I'm basically going to go ahead here and grab some of the existing assets I have on this one and just paste them outward. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and um, grab the middle pole here on my fence and I'm going to copy it and then create a new layer on my timeline and just paste it. Oops, I actually grabbed two there, but that's okay. So I'm going to move it forward here and just kind of put the two posts over here and I will just go ahead and grab this one as well and paste that one over here. Now, again, I don't really want them to look quite the same as these posts over here. So I'm just going to quickly go ahead and just kind of modify them in different ways. Just kind of give it more of a randomization look. And just kind of like this. And we'll just go like this. Okay. We're going to do the same thing now with the horizontal posts. Just grab this top one and I will bring it over here and I'll put it maybe down here just to kind of give it a bit of a different feel and I'll extend it kind of outward like that so it touches the uh, other posts and I'll just kind of bring it up like this so it looks like it's connecting. Try that one more time. There we go. <clears throat> and then I'll just go ahead and get rid of that line with my selection tool like that and delete it. <clears throat> and I'll just do the same thing here. Grab another post, copy it, and paste it. And we'll just put it right up here and extend it outward and have it match or close to match at least. And delete the line. And just we'll do that one more time now. And I'll just use the same post actually. And this time I'll just go ahead and go to modify, transform, and flip it vertically just to give it a bit more um, variety. And again, just connect it and extend it outward. Let's go ahead, go, go like that, delete that. And there you go. Looks like we have our fence completed. Okay, so now we have extended the fence out and we're gonna do the same thing now for all the other assets, save for the tree and the sky. So let's come down here to our road symbol and just double click on that and go into that. And here, this is a little bit easier. I'm simply going to go ahead and click the road layer itself and make sure that whole thing is selected. And with my free transform tool, I'm going to again, extend it outward to about where the fence is. Maybe even a little more like that. And we have a bunch of little gravel texture thingies going on here. So we can also just take our eyedropper tool and select that so we get the, um, the way the line looks and the width and all that. And just gonna come in here then and supply some more of that. I'm going to just apply one width first and then I'll go back in and select them individually and apply different widths to them like I have in my like I had in the first examples over there. So I'll just go ahead and do this really quick. And I could probably spend a little bit more time on this too, but I'm just kind of hurrying up here for demonstration purposes. So go like that. And again, I'm just now going to come in here with my selection tool and select the different bits here 
and just kind of apply different widths to them. So seven, and then I'll give this one a nine. This one, five. And, and that should be good. And again, I could spend a little bit more time on that, maybe add some more, do some more variety, but you get the idea. Now, we have some rocks here too. I'm going to go ahead and just take one of these rocks and I'm going to just highlight it and I'm going to copy it and just bring one over here and paste it in. Kind of just set it over here and I'll just bring one more over because I don't want too many rocks on the road. And then I'll just paste it like that and we'll set it over here. Okay, oops, we don't want that because it's actually overlapping with the fence, so let's bring it right over there. There we go. Now, what I want to do is do the same exact thing with the ground. So I'm just gonna come over here to my ground, double click on that symbol, and I'm first going to extend the actual ground out and then I will do the grass blades next. So again, just like I did with the road, my free transform tool, I'm just dragging it outward to about right there. Now with the grass, I'm simply going to highlight the grass blades layer and I'm going to copy it and I'm just going to paste it like that. And I'm just gonna kind of apply it just like that. Maybe move it over a bit like this, okay? And then I'm going to just do that one more time. Paste, and just kind of apply it over here. And maybe adjust it a little bit with my free transform tool since the slant changes a little bit. And there we go. And for the excess grass, you can either leave it or you can just kind of trim it off like that. Okay, the final thing we need to do then is extend the hills out. So just double click on that symbol, of course, highlight your hills, copy, find a new layer, paste, and just nudge it over so it kind of connects like that. Now we get to actually do the actual scrolling process. So what we're going to do is, since now that we have all these layers extended out, we can go ahead and actually tween them to move. So I'm going to go ahead and ex go to my um, timeline here, excuse me, and I'm going to go to frame 150 and I'm going to ap apply a keyframe on frame 150 to all the layers. So on my top layer, select frame 150, hold and shift, come down to the bottom layer, right click, insert keyframe. Now, at frame 150, I'm going to click my road and I'm going to just click and drag it like this, as far as you want to go. And I'll just kind of go right about there. Same, we're gonna do the same thing now with the fence. Now we'll apply the same effect to the grass and the tree. So I'm going to just click the tree, hold and shift, and then click the ground. And again, I'm just gonna move it forward like this. Now, I'm not gonna move it as much as the fence or the road because again, it's in the background and it's not gonna to appear to move as much compared to the stuff that's in the foreground. And finally, we have the hills. And those aren't gonna move that much at all because again, they're way out in the background. So we'll probably to move them just a little bit like that. So now we'll come back here to our frame, our first frame here for each layer and we're going to apply a classic or motion tween. So I'll just right click frame one on my road layer and create a classic tween. For the fence do the same thing, tree, grass, and hills. So I'll just go like that. So now when we hit enter, we can kind of see the scrolling effect coming into play. 
And again, you can kind of tell but what I mean by now by the fact that you have things move slower in the background. It kind of gives it more of a 3D effect, in fact, kind of gives it some more depth. But anyway, the final thing we need to do now is add our character into this scene and have him walk. So I'm going to just create a new layer for our character and name that character. And then I'm just going to go over here to my library because I already have him in here actually. And I'm just going to drag him right onto that layer. And I'm going to flip him because he should be actually walking the other way based on the scrolling. So let's go ahead and go like that. And we'll just kind of nudge him to the center like this. Maybe shrink him a little bit with our free transform tool. Kind of go like that. Now if we go to control, test movie, we can see this play out. And there you go. Now obviously, if you extend the um, frames on your timeline out more, the background's gonna move slower, or depending on how far you move it and all that stuff. So you can adjust that depending on how fast your character is moving and all those elements. But that is how you do it. Anyway, I hope you guys found this helpful and I will see you guys next time.